Let's start with the bad news. Autocrats worldwide are trying to withhold information from the citizens. We can't take free and trustworthy information on the internet for granted. The good news? There are ways to circumvent censorship. We'll talk about that in a second, also on the show. Police in different countries are scaling up technology to hunt down criminals. Less crime sounds great, but there are also drawbacks. What should we consider when deciding to involve AI in tackling crime? And we'll also be talking about something a little lighter. Instagram and TikTok are full of inspiration for the holiday of your dreams. More and more people are also using AI for their travel plans. Is tech now the best tour guide? These are the topics that are moving the tech world. Free and reliable information online is at risk worldwide. Governments censor content they don't like, or even shut down the internet temporarily to withhold information from citizens. And activists are exposed because their private data isn't safe. These problems were discussed in November 2024 at the Falling Wall Science Summit in Berlin. Free information is a very endangered species because uh, a lot of autocrats are blocking the internet. And we are in a situation where at the end maybe there is not much exchange anymore between uh, people and between countries. So I think uh, we have to take really care of uh, the internet and making it free again. So what are the biggest challenges? Online censorship. The strictest form of online censorship is China's Great Firewall. It controls internet traffic between China and the outside world. The Chinese internet is only connected to the outside network at a few key points, making it possible to monitor exactly what goes in and out. By blocking users from entering websites and filtering keywords, it prevents access to certain information. It can even monitor and disrupt supposedly dangerous content. Governments wanting to block information have several options. I would say they can act at three different levels. They can either interfere at the level of, uh, let's say, the Internet's address book, DNS. So they can choose to give you wrong directions in terms of accessing a particular site. In some cases, they might just close the roads. They might say, when you're trying to go in a certain direction, your packets will not go through anymore. Or in other cases, they might look at specific features or properties of your traffic and they might decide that certain classes of traffic are allowed or disallowed. Russia uses similar methods. The government agency Roskomnadzor monitors and censors mass media, including social media. In 2024, Russia banned content from so-called foreign agents and criminalized ads and sites promoting VPNs or virtual private networks. Apple was even forced to remove some VPN apps from its app store. VPNs help people get around online censorship. In simple terms, they create a virtual tunnel that hides IP addresses and keeps users anonymous. Banning them doesn't just cut citizens off from free information. It also puts political activists at risk. This way, unwanted reporting can be blocked before it even starts. Activists in danger. People campaigning for issues such as democracy, social justice, the environment, refugees and gender rights are being targeted. And not just by repressive regimes. Activists everywhere need to step up their digital security to avoid surveillance and hacking. My recommendation to you would be to use something like Tor, which is an anonymity network that provides additional layers of security. I would suggest following a set of uh, common best practices, avoiding password reuse, uh, making sure that uh, the sites that you are uh, sharing your information with are secure, uh, and you know, following some of the available information out there in, in terms of uh, improving your uh, digital self-defense. In case you want to ramp up your digital self-defense, check the Tor Project website. You can find more information there. How can new technologies help with these problems? Not only do activists have to step up their game, but editors and news networks do too. We work with VPN techniques, we work with mirror techniques, uh, but at the end it's a cat and mouse race against uh, sensors and, and blockers. A mirror site is a copy of a website hosted on a different server to improve accessibility and load times. It helps distribute traffic and ensures the site remains available even if the main server is down. They also work in regions with restricted internet access. Iran has been blocking DW websites since 2009, but thanks to a cooperation with the free VPN tool Siphon, DW actually reaches many people there. In September 2024, DW had more than 3 million online visits in Iran, 75% of them via the DW Siphon app. 
If you want to use the app, just write an email to dw-w at siphon3.com. Apart from VPNs and mirror websites, a lot of hope lies in new encryption technologies. They could make internet censorship harder. Encrypted DNS, or domain name system, makes the address book of the internet more private. So you can't be tracked so easily. Encryption on other levels would make it harder for others to control what you can access. And this is where you, as an internet user, come into the equation. If you want to help guarantee free access to information online, find out about these technologies and use them. AI helping to fight crime sounds great. Right? Facial recognition could help catch criminals faster. So-called predictive policing might even stop crimes before they happen. But it's not that simple. More security or a threat to privacy? Let's weigh up the pros and cons of AI and policing. Police and AI. A recent study found that 75% of European citizens support the use of AI by police and military, for example, for surveillance. Surprising, given that innocent citizens have also been harmed by faulty AI. Don't get me wrong, AI can sift through large amounts of data quickly, like databases of wanted persons or crime statistics. It can also draw conclusions faster than any police officer. But AI makes mistakes and can be misused. Check out what happened in Buenos Aires, for example. Facial recognition systems. 75% of Argentina's capital Buenos Aires is under video surveillance. The city rolled out a massive facial recognition program in 2019. Within months, the government claimed nearly 1,700 wanted criminals had been caught. But dozens of errors were made as well, leading to unjustified police checks and even arrests. One resident, Guillermo Ibarola, was wrongfully detained for six days. Data protection activists sued the city, which led to the system being shut down in 2022. The system has been in limbo ever since. Activists and city representatives haven't yet been able to agree on a legal framework. Because there are more concerns, the investigation found data not just on crime, but also on politicians, activists and journalists. Were police using the system to track people illegally? An even bigger concern with facial recognition is that it can be used for ethnic profiling. China, for example, has used this technology to monitor and detain the Muslim Uyghur minority. And facial recognition also has a general flaw. It doesn't work equally well for everyone. Studies show it's least accurate for people of color, women, and non-binary individuals. So there is a lot of work to be done before these systems can function without bias. Predictive policing. What if crimes could be prevented before they're committed? That's the idea behind predictive policing. With AI, large data sets can be analyzed to spot patterns and trends humans might miss. In theory, this could make police work more efficient and reduce human error in decision making. But the accuracy and fairness of these models depend on the quality and diversity of the data they're trained on. The risk of reinforcing existing biases is high. When AI is trained on biased historical crime data, it can reinforce those biases. Over-policed minority neighborhoods may appear to have higher crime rates. As a result, predictive policing tools could unfairly target these communities, increasing inequality. Nevertheless, predictive models are already being used in certain fields. For instance, they help assess risks at large events like football matches. This allows police to focus on areas where issues are most likely to occur, for example, fights. AI and police, can it work? AI can save police officers time. For example, AI might be able to do paperwork in the future. It can also ensure that officers are in the right place at the right time. And it could even lead to fairer decisions by removing human prejudices from the equation. But to get there, some obstacles need to be overcome. First, databases must be truly representative and diverse to ensure they treat everyone fairly. And second, there needs to be a clear legal framework on what data authorities can access. Abuse of this technology could threaten our privacy and civil rights. What do you think of AI policing? Let us know. Okay, time for something lighter. Are you planning a vacation? With AI, Instagram and TikTok, it has never been easier to discover new places. Now Google is joining in with AI for maps. But do algorithms really make the best travel guides? AI for trip planning. According to a survey in the US, one in five young people are already using AI for their travel plans. Apps designed to plan trips or chatbots like ChatGPT and Gemini could be your personal travel guide. Here are three ways they can help. 
Firstly, finding the perfect destination. Chatbots process mountains of information that could take you hours to dig through. So if you're after something specific, like a warm beach with snorkeling spots, they can help fast. Just enter detailed prompts that include things like temperature, length of the trip, or planned activities. Secondly, creating your itinerary. AI can help you create a travel route tailored to your location and length of stay. For city visits, try Google Maps Immersive View. It uses AI and computer vision to create 3D models of how a given place might look at a specific time up to four days in the future. But the feature isn't supported in every city yet. And thirdly, booking flights and hotels. Many travel sites now have chatbots to simplify the booking process. Google's Gemini chatbot also offers a solution. By being integrated with Google Flights and Hotels, it can compare times and prices for you. Pretty convenient. But there's something even more useful for Gen Z when it comes to planning a trip. Using Insta and TikTok as travel guides. TikTok and Instagram make it easy to find hidden gems, like cool restaurants and scenic views. Aside from travel ads, the platforms can actually give you a real glimpse into places. Here's how to do it. Use the geolocation to see posts from where you want to go. You can search for hashtags of the country or city you want to visit to get some inspiration for cool spots. If you're not sure where to go yet, try general hashtags like hashtag travel or hashtag travel photography. They might give you an idea. All right, your trip is booked. Your route is planned. So, what could go wrong? Well, this kind of travel planning has its downsides. What you see online might not be what you'll get. Images shared by influencers are designed to have a glossy appeal. Reality might be somewhat disappointing and you definitely need to prepare for crowds. AI will spit out the most searched places as will social media algorithms. If more users follow these suggestions and replicate the posts, over-tourism might only get worse. That means a popular place will become overcrowded with tourists, and that often results in conflicts with locals. Take Barcelona, for example. Locals protested against overwhelming tourist crowds last summer. And there's more to keep in mind. Double-check information from chatbots. They might get things wrong or be outdated. Also, look for recent reviews of the places you want to go to. The quality might have changed over the years. So how do you plan your trips? That's all from me today. Bye and see you next time.